my, my ultimate vision with Fat Joe is to become something that goes up against Fiverr or Upwork. So if you've got, if you're a business and you need something doing, you go, it becomes a household name. I think quite often people see it and they look at like the Mr. Beasts of the world yeah. and they think, I, I need an audience like that. And actually, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, I love our name, Fat Joe. I love it. Um, and I think it's really filled its own boots, but we didn't realise there was a, a rapper called Fat Joe when we started. <laughs> so um, had we known that, I don't think we'd have chose Fat Joe. We'd have chose something similar. Hi, and welcome to the Online Performance Podcast, the podcast that aims to help you elevate your online earnings from others who've been there and done it before. I'm really pleased today to be joined by Joe Davis of Fat Joe. I'm sure you'll give us a, a good intro into who you are. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's kick things off. Let's tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, Joe. Sure. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so I'm Joe. Um, I started Fat Joe around 10 years ago. I've been in, in, into SEO for maybe 15, 16 years at this point. Um, I, my previous background before Fat Joe was agency work, freelancer work. I did some niche websites, in-house work. Um, and then, yeah, it led me to start my own agency um, in a fashion. It's not really an agency. It's more of a marketplace for agencies. Uh, and, yeah, that's led me to this point, um, 10 years in Fat Joe. Fantastic. So, yeah, you've got a, a wealth of experience, and we're going to delve into that today. I want to delve into certainly your business, but also into you as an individual and, and kind of what has led you down this path and try and pick apart certain things that – in, in terms of what has made you successful, because you have been, you know, very, very successful. And from a, a brand building point of view as well, I know the, the website's just had a, a redesign, which looks fantastic, by the way. Uh, but I think in terms of brand, you, you, you really have done a fantastic job with Fat Joe. And certainly when I got involved with, with SEO and online marketing, which is probably about eight or nine years ago, Fat Joe was one of the first brands that ever kind of stuck out to me. Uh, it just, there was something that resonated with it. So I've been aware of it for quite a while. But we start each podcast with the same question. And the question is, what is online success? So essentially, what does online success mean for you? Right. Well, yeah, I think online su success is basically about whatever your goal is, whatever you're trying to achieve and doing it through the medium of on online. So it doesn't have to be about money. It doesn't have to be about building a successful business it could be it could be a charity it could be your own personal brand it could be getting a message out there um i think online success you know in terms of our industry is more about you know how much money you can make we're, we're very exposed to that kind of thing especially on twitter and that kind of thing but yeah in general to me i think you can be successful online if you can get your message out there or whatever it is whatever it is you're trying to achieve through the medium of online whether that's social SEO paid, whatever that is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really interesting, actually, that you pointed out what you see on Twitter. And I think the spaces in which you hang out will probably determine how you view online success. Yeah. And like you said, particularly on Twitter, in our space, there's a lot of people that some people say it's bragging, some people say it's motivational, but that they'll share their online earnings. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be about that. I think you're right. Uh, but I think where you hang out and the people that you hang out with probably does have some influence on that. Now, great answer. Thanks, Joe. So what was it that got you started in the online business, first of all? Because you're not a million miles away from me. Uh, yeah. I don't know if the people can tell by the accent. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, did, did you have a did you go straight into the online world from a professional point of view or, or was there, was there a time before that for you? Yeah. So when I left school, I was doing um, like McDonald's um, working in factories, working on building sites. I was like going job to job. And yeah, at some point I thought uh, my, my first thought was I wanted a job sitting down. That was my first <laughs> thing. So I wanted to do that. And um, I got an IT apprenticeship. And in this IT apprenticeship, they asked me if I wanted to look at the website and start building the website. So I learned like Dreamweaver. This was before the days of WordPress. Yeah, remember it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was on Dreamweaver learning HTML and CSS, that kind of thing. And then their next problem was, well, we've got this new website, which weren't very good, but it was a website nonetheless. And they wanted it to get traffic, uh, but they didn't want to pay for any traffic. Um, so I started looking to SEO and then... There was a lot of forums back in then days, like um, the Warrior Forum, Wicked mm -hmm. Fire. Um, th there was a, 
a lot of them, that's how you got your information, basically. Um, so I was, I was just learning everything I could. I even bought a few ebooks and courses. And I just got a bit obsessed with this. Um, I suppose it was the the dream of of quitting your job and and getting a Lambo and and doing doing nothing basically while websites earn money for you. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of what dragged me along, thinking, wow, well, one day I could, you know, I could get really good at SEO and get, have these affiliate websites earning all this money. Um, but accidentally, through through that process, I just learned, I just become pretty good at SEO. And after becoming good at SEO and getting some rankings for this employer that I was working for, it just led me to to get better and better jobs, um, in-house agency jobs. And yeah, it's just a case of learning on the job and just getting better, getting the skills. Eventually that that dream of the Lambo and everything sort of subsided and it weren't about that anymore. It just become about, I actually quite enjoy this. It's kind of like an engineering job, the SEO. It's kind of like mm. reverse engineering and you're getting involved in, in the technical side, but it's also creative. It's a bit of everything. So yeah, just really... Um, I really resonated with it, with all the skill sets involved. That's really interesting. And I, I also kind of leads me on to my next question, really, which is, do you think you always had that entrepreneurial mindset or is that something that you accidentally kind of, because the way you kind of described it then was you weren't really sure what you wanted to do. You kind of mm. wanted to get out of that manual labor kind of environment mm. and, and do something that maybe a little bit more uh, sedentary or strategic even. Mm. So then by the fact that you then fell into website design and SEO, did that kind of find you or do you think you kind of found it? Do you think you always would have gone down that route of be creating something for yourself? And again, you said the idea of making money while you're not physically having to put in the hours to do something, mm. something that just sits in the background and does that. So is that entrepreneurial mindset something that you think you always had or do you think you, you learnt it along the way? Yeah, I think I think I always had that kind of kind of curiosity uh, around around making money or, or creating something for myself, um, I think I come I come at it from a very immature way when I was really young. You know, I just wanted to have everything and do nothing. You know, and that that was the the mindset I was I was in. So I was always looking for just like hacks and tricks and make money online was probably a search that I did a few times. You know, and you find all these these scams or not even scams. They're just like they're just pipe dreams that are never going to happen. You've got to put the work in. Um, so, yeah, I think I've always had that curiosity. Um, and, and I think SEO was just the thing that I latched onto. When, when it appeared, it became the thing that I thought, okay, well, if there's anything that's going to going to work, it's going to be this. Absolutely. No, I like that. And I think, again, you've hit the nail on the head there in terms of putting in the hard work. A lot of people yeah. see these things, and, you know, you said not necessarily a scam, but you see – we all see it now with YouTube thumbnails, you know, zero to 100K in a month or whatever. Yeah. Not really possible, is it? For most people, it's not. Uh, yeah. And I think people need to realize that if they are going to go into something like this, it's not the easy route. In fact, it's probably a much harder route than just getting a, a standard nine to five job. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about Fat Joe then, how, how that kind of started, the 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 business model because you've got a lot of services that you offer now I'm, I'm guessing that's obviously evolved over time i think when i first came across fat joe i was probably looking at it from a, a link building agency point of view or, or a link yep. building service outreach service uh, but there's a lot more to it now isn't there yeah so when we started fat joe we were working at a seo agency me myself and my partner my business partner um, we work at and working at an seo agency and we needed a supplier we needed a vendor for links because we were at the point where we couldn't find link builders in house. We couldn't find content writers in house. We didn't even want to hire them in house because we had a small office and we didn't want more people to manage. We just wanted to outsource the deliverables. You know, we had everything else covered. We had, we had the account management covered. We had the selling covered. We just couldn't get the work done. So we was, you know, we was on forums, we was on Upwork, we was on Fiverr. And we found it very, very exhausting to, to go through all these freelancers, get the work done. Some went missing, some delivered back bad work. So we wanted to find someone who was, you know, the premium, the Amazon of the SEO world, that someone who you can really rely on. You're getting that really good delivery time. Um, you're getting really good customer support. You're not speaking to the, the SEO. You're speaking to a customer, customer support specialist. So we couldn't find that. 
Um, so me and my business partner, we decided to create that while I was working for the agency. And it didn't take long before we, we sort of was earning enough money and we quit our agency and our agency become a client of ours. Um, yeah, and it all happened really fast. And yet yeah, it was link building primarily, um, but we called it Fat Joe. We called it something ambiguous because we knew we just didn't want to focus on on one part. We wanted to have the scope to become, you know, the B2B marketplace or the agency marketplace. Love it. Yeah, I think that was a key decision actually in the in the evolution because although the the brand, the, the look and feel of the brand has probably evolved over time, like for example, with the new website now, the, the name hasn't had to change and it is kind of synonymous with the industry now. And mm. actually browsing through the site, you've got some fantastic testimonials from real big players in the game, like Neil mm. Patel and Nathan Gotch, who, you know, are, are huge in the SEO industry. So clearly, you know, you, you, you're doing something right. So, so you based, you, you are still physically based in the West Midlands in the UK. Is that right? Yeah, so we've got a core office in yeah in Cannock, which is yeah in, in Birmingham, um, and we obviously we we're we're a remote business. We we can be remote. Most of our staff are actually remote. We've got over a hundred uh, contractors, freelancers, all working for us. Who they write for us. They're doing link building. They're doing graphics design. Uh, they're doing outreach for us. Um, but we've got a core team in the UK. There's about 15 of us who who are in the office, and we could be remote. But I think everyone genuinely just likes coming into the office and and getting stuff done face to face, speaking to each other, seeing each other. You know, I see genuine friendships in here. Um, it's not just about colleagues. So, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I love remote work. I, I I live in Spain for six months of the year, so I I'll go and do that. And if if the staff wanted to do that as well, that that's fine. But I think having this this headquarters that everyone can come back to and and sort of meet in one central place, I think that really helps. So I, I love that, and the fact that so really you're saying location isn't that important, no. but having that kind of central hub is fr- fr- from your company's point of view that's actually really beneficial. There's lots of benefits to it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, if I was to start a company today from from day zero, I probably wouldn't have an office, but because we started ten years ago. This was pre-COVID. This was like kind of, we start a company, we've got to get an office. Like that was kind of the, the way it was back then. Um, and just because it has been that way and and that's the way the culture's evolved, we've just, we've stayed that way. Love it. Love it. And I mean, I've, I've seen you with some of your staff before and clearly you can see the relationships are there. And it's, mm. You know, it's that's been fostered, obviously, uh, o- over the years. So obviously as the business has grown, what have there been any kind of pitfalls with with bringing in more services i'm sure that brings its own challenges uh, and I'm, I'm guessing the positives outweigh the negatives so could you just talk, talk to us a little bit about that yeah so i mean the reason we we want to offer more services is because obviously we've got a customer avatar which is an agency an agency who wants to be streamlined and smart and, and minimal and outsource their deliverables and not have a big team of you know content writers and link builders. So obviously we knew link building was a big one. It's an obvious one for an SEO agency to outsource, but then there's other things like content writing. Mm-hmm. That was easy for us because we hired lots of content writers for link building. So we already had that resource. But then the challenging ones were things like video. Now video is such a subjective service because it's so easy to like just point your finger at any part of the video and go, I don't like that bit. I don't like that bit. So there's a lot of back and forth with video, which has been quite hard to, to get right and get the price point right and get the staff right and the team right. Um, we've launched new services such as press releases, local citations, which have been a bit more easy because it's not subjective. It's like, yeah, has it been done or hasn't it been done? Um, we're currently going through a process of, of launching um digital PR services. So we already have Harrow, which we, we kind of rename into reactive PR because we're not using Harrow anymore. Um, and yeah, I, ju- I just think I love having the new services. They are a challenge, every single one, like launching them. I mean, it'd be so much easier just to stick to, to link building. <laughs> but I think it just it puts us in a great position in the future to have just this this marketplace of services. And my, my ultimate vision with Fat Joe is to become something that goes up against Fiverr or Upwork. So if you've got, if you're a business and you need something doing, you go, it becomes a household name. 
in the in the B2B world. Fantastic. And we, we'll come back to that. We'll, we'll definitely okay. uh, delve into that a little bit more. Uh, so, okay, let's, let's just step aside from Fat Joe for a minute then, because it's, you've got other things going on as well, haven't you? It's not just Fat Joe. Uh, I think you've, you've got uh, a variety of online ventures, one of which is Query Hunter, which is, yep. is it's a, a Chrome extension, is it? Yeah, so it started off as a, a WordPress plugin. Um, it was just because... I was doing um, like niche website stuff, and one of the strategies of niche websites, as you know, is to go through old content, look at your Google Search Console, look at queries that are, you're being found for, but you haven't included in the content. And I was kind of getting a bit fed up with uh, control and find, navigating through Google Search Console, which is really hard to use as it is. Um, so I thought there's got to be some kind of like plugin which augments your your WordPress content with Google Search Console data. And yeah, launched that, and it, it it was free, just a free plugin. It it got a lot of downloads. I think it had around seven thousand downloads. Um, but then, because of that, I decided, well, actually, this you know we could actually take this to the next level, and we could start doing some really advanced stuff with it. So I've got a friend who's a developer. He helped me turn it into a well. He he did turn it into a Chrome extension, which works even better i think than the wordpress plugin because it can work on any platform um and i think it's taking content optimization to the next level we've still got a long way to go yet um, but it's just um in terms of my business interest it's just something on the side it's just a, a little hobby i mean it's just what i like to do i, I think i just get a bit i get that itch that i want to scratch and that's just creating new little projects and side businesses I think that goes back to being having that entrepreneurial mindset, doesn't it? The, that yeah. entrepreneur's mind that just never sleeps, it never rests. Also yeah. quite creative, and obviously this is another creative outlet for you. Uh, are there any other things going on in Joe Davis's life? No. In Joe, I, just, just in terms of professional, we don't have to go yeah, into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, nothing, nothing big to mention, really. Um, I'm, I'm really working on personal brand for the first time. You know, this, these past two years uh, have, have been – really interesting in terms of personal brand i'm really enjoying sort of you know just tweeting whatever comes to my mind on twitter uh, or x as you call it now and building a, a mailing list i've got a newsletter which goes out every wednesday now um i just i'm just enjoying that side of it um i'm trying not to do too much i have to stop myself from starting new projects and and you know new affiliate websites all the time but um, my main focus is fat joe um, and then building the personal brand. I think everything synergizes quite well. Um, but yeah, that, that's do it. People, now, do people call you Fat Joe? They, they do sometimes. Yeah, they, they, yeah, it's always the same. But you're not fat. Are you, are you, are you the Fat Joe? But you're not fat. Yeah. And I, I have to always say oh, I've been on a diet, or I have to come up with a new one every time. I think yeah. the personal branding is is really interesting again because this is something that's cropping up on a lot of these interviews that. Everyone seems to be piling into that. So let's yeah. just touch on that for for a second then. So how long has it been since you've been pushing on the personal brand? You say a couple of years? Well, I, yeah. So I had um, I was in Barcelona a couple of years ago, yeah, and I was out at this dinner with these entrepreneurs. Do you know, do you know Mark Rofe? Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't the, know him, but I know, I know the name and I know of him. Digital yeah. PR billboard guy. And he, and he sort of got some some UK people that were in Barcelona together at this dinner. And we was all talking about, you know, Twitter and personal brand. And I had the least followers. Like, I had, like, 300 <laughs> followers, and it really annoyed me. So I went home that, that night, and I was like, I'm really annoyed with this. Like, I need to I need to get more followers. I need to work on the personal brand. And it's from that point, I just, yeah, I just decided to tweet every single day. And I don't think I missed a day since. That's um, that was about two years ago. So I've just been tweeting every day. Some of them terrible tweets. Some of them just don't make any sense. But I just think you get into the habit of tweeting every day, some of them pop off and then people start resonating with what you're saying. And before you know it, you, you're kind of thinking of, you know, it's, it's like with Query Hunter. When I launched that, that really got me a lot of followers just because I give something to the marketplace for free. And I think people really respect that. And they just like, as a reward, you get all these followers and then you, you can sort of launch more stuff off the back of that. Yeah, and you're well over 20,000 followers now, aren't you, on your oh. personal brand? Yeah, over over twenty thirty, about twenty four or something like that. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Uh, I, I find Twitter really interesting. X, sorry, really interesting in terms of 
how certain things just catch they get traction and they and they just fly yeah. just yeah. really does push you out to a huge audience of people that you know you've not necessarily been showcased in front of before i think in a way that many other platforms don't do mm. uh, i think yeah, it's yeah. really good at doing that so i think for anyone listening that's thinking about personal brand and not sure what platform to go on it, obviously depending on your niche and what it is you're focusing on yeah. twitter can be really explosive and is consistency the key there do you think yeah i think consistency um even over quality, I think I think it, as long as you're showing up every day and just just tweeting something. The thing is with Twitter, I think you can be yourself. And we keep calling it Twitter, but it's just easy to say the next. Yeah, thing, it is. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you can be yourself. You can you can just say something that's that's really not really that interesting, um, or it could be like a there could be subtext to it, or it could be sarcastic. Mm. It could be a joke. You know, it, it, it could be shit posting. Um, yeah, and it works really well. But you couldn't do that on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you. No. You've got to kind of like you've got to think for a couple of days before you post on LinkedIn about what it is. You've got to put a picture of a crying dog or something, you know, and you've got to get all this attention. Whereas, yeah, Twitter just just works a lot differently. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, your offline relationships. Then you've just said there that you had this meeting or, or, or just a you know a dinner with a couple of guys a couple yeah. of years ago that just that influenced that one decision. And obviously, that's had a big impact on on your personal brand. Yeah. How, how important do you think those offline relationships are? Like you talked about your company as well, and the, the staff members there, that, and and creating that kind of community. Yeah. Uh, how much value do you put on that? And and for anyone listening that's thinking about getting into stuff online, would you say that those offline relationships are still key? Yeah, definitely, definitely not. And I think if you if you do meet people online, I think you've got to meet them offline as soon as possible it it changes the whole dynamic and how um, do you do that how do you how do you go about that without sounding like a weirdo or a stalker well is I it think just you, because you get to know them over time online yeah i think you get to know them over time online but i think it helps where you are as well i mean it's a bit harder in in birmingham um i mean there's a few people in birmingham but when you get to the places you know when you get to your london's of the world or barcelona or the big cities in america you, it's very easy just to sort of go and meet these people because they're in the city. Um, so I think it helps traveling about a bit. Um, but also there's a lot of conferences in, in every industry, but especially SEO, there's conferences you can go to. Like the one, we, we was both at Search Birmingham, yeah. right? Uh, Search Birmingham, it, it was a great one. That was the first time I met a lot of the people there. Um, but since I've met them, you know, privately outside of conferences. And then there's there's like the Chiang Mai SEO one, which yeah. I didn't go to this year, but that looked that looked good. It did, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a bit disappointed to miss. Did you miss it as well? I missed it as well. So it was my daughter's yeah. birthday that week, but um, I'm booked in for next it. year. Yeah, I'm booked in for next year. I'm, I'm also doing the, there's one in Vietnam that I'm going to as well. Because I, I 100% agree with you. I think getting out, meeting the people that you're collaborating with online or just in the same space as, for me, there's so much value. Just, you can learn from listening to podcasts, watching videos, yeah. reading tweets and that sort of thing. But when you spend a good few hours with someone or a couple of days or a week, you, for me, you just learn so much. Yeah. Yeah. The conversations just flow more and it becomes less robotic. People are sharing more. And, and I think that's, that's the key. I mean, especially in SEO, I think everyone is very open to sharing everything. There's no real competitors. I mean, I've got competitors that I speak to, you know, on a weekly basis and we're sharing things. We, the pie is big enough for everyone, you know, so I don't think yeah. um, having this competitor mindset is is good, when, especially when you go to these meetups. Yeah, I'm all about the abundance mindset and saying, yeah. look, share as much as you can. There's, there's the, like you say, the pie is plenty big enough. There's, yeah. there's so much opportunity. Sometimes people say to you, you know, well, why, why are you sharing that? Why are you giving away that tip or that strategy? Or why are you showing people what – you know, one of your sites. And for me, it, it is, it's all about that. There's, there's yeah. more than enough out there for, for everyone. Um, yeah. and, and you know, there's, there's, there's so many people in the world that just, w w no matter what you could spoon feed them everything and they won't take action. So yeah. I think there's, there's that side of it as well. I want to kind of come back to that a little bit I I yeah. in a while as well. Okay. So, so like we said, you've got a number of ventures. Is there one in particular that kind of brings you the most joy? Is that obviously, you know, I think you mentioned that you do you still work on your own sites as well as a, a little side bit. project? 
Yeah, a little bit. Like I've got a few. They're they're dreadful sites. They're not making the internet better at all. So <laughs> I've I, got I'm a few not, of those. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not proud of them. They they're just I learn I learn a lot about SEO by doing them because I don't do client SEO anymore. Like I don't actually like one to one look at client sites and go into their their CMS or anything like that. Um, it really helps me just to have my own websites which are ticking along, which I can just go into, break some stuff or you know there's a new like strategy with ai content or a new tool i want to use i can just use my sites just to blast some some content or links or whatever it is i want to do um yeah but in terms of in terms of projects that bring the most joy i think obviously fat joe is is the one for me like that that i'm that i'm working on every single day and um i love the brand and i think it's going to be here to stay um so yeah that's the one that brings the most joy and obviously my personal brand which yeah. I'm always going to be me, so I might as well give that some attention and give that some hard work because whether I'm doing SEO in 10 years' time or whether it's whether I'm a comedian or whether I'm, you know, selling laptops or whatever it might be, I've got a I've got a Twitter account and I can go from naught to one very quick with a, a big audience. So that's a that's an important one to me as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Really good point. So through your last decade or so that you've been working online, are there any big mistakes that you've made that you think you could maybe share just to allow other people just just for one to hear that you know we all make mistakes and i think it's really yeah. important that we do and we all learn from those mistakes um but yeah. then maybe also to help people avoid them along the way yeah so i think not really a mistake but something we, we should have considered a lot more was i mean i love our name fat joe i love it um and i think it's really filled its own boots but we didn't realize there was a a rapper called Fat Joe when we started. <laughs> so um, had we known that, I don't think we'd have chose Fat Joe. We'd have chose something similar, but not Fat Joe. So I think before choosing a name, I mean, you shouldn't spend too long on a name. You, you know, like they're, they're not that important. But I think you should really consider your your branding um, in terms of is there any other companies called the same name? Is there any rappers in America called the same name? Is there going to be some issues down the line because for us, it, it did cause us some ranking issues, you know, we, yeah. and, and it, we waste so much money on paperclip because people are searching for fat Joe and they're looking for the rapper, they're looking for the songs. Um, it's exactly that, what I did prior to this podcast. I, I just went on Google yeah. and fat Joe. And obviously that was where I came up again, came up with the, the rapper <laughs> and all of that. It's interesting. Exactly. I was talking to Kazra dash uh, yeah. for an episode of this podcast and and I asked him this question about how important is it to have a unique name and that we were, we were talking about that from a personal brand point of view yeah but obviously unless you're going to adopt a, a fake kind of or a, a made up persona it's you don't have so much control over it when it's your own but of course no. when it's a company brand you've got full control from the outset yeah yeah and I, and I think it, yeah it's just important to have to have that kind of just awareness of mm -hmm. everything and we, we were very quick to just to move into to business, we we didn't really look at who who was ranking or what who else was called Fat Joe. So no, I think that's a yeah, I think that's a great a great tip just to spend that little bit of time looking at what else is out there, um, yeah. because yeah, I mean, you can also be impacted from a, a net you know negatively in terms of reputation as well and what connotations come up and what connotations there are to that name. So yeah. I think I mentioned this the other day when you search my name, there's a serial killer on page one. So that's not great for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's another bald guy as well. So with it, if someone could just looking quickly, <laughs> they might yeah. think it's me. Uh, you know, he's got he's bald and a bit of stubble. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's really important. I like that. That's great. Um, so imagine you're starting again. I think you mentioned this earlier. You know, if you you were starting from scratch and you've got all the knowledge that you've got now, would you do a similar Thing? Would you go down this route of of setting up this online marketplace where you offer multiple services, or, or is that just starting? Someone just starting out is that too much to kind of step into? Do you think is should you should you know? Because what I'm trying to get at is if there's someone listening to this podcast who doesn't quite know what they want to do, they've got mm. this idea that they want to work online, they want to make money, but they're not 100 percent sure what to do. Is is there a certain thing that you would advise them or, or do you think just go all in yeah I, th I think the fastest the fastest way to to start earning money uh, if they've got to get get it fast as well is to offer some kind of service mm -hmm. so to find some kind of service that people want whether that's in the online world you know 
people are wanting links, people are wanting uh, content, people want video. Um, I would say to start some kind of productized service and sell that through Twitter or through LinkedIn, through any of the forums, even on Fiverr or Upwork, you know, you could get a profile set up and you can start earning money by the end of the month if you've got a good service. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to learn how to do this service or you need to learn a, a massive skill. Um, you could find someone that's already doing it because there's plenty of people doing it on Fiverr, plenty of people doing it on Upwork that don't know how to market themselves. They might be doing it on an hourly basis. You could find these people and you could package up their offering and you could create a, a little website or even just a landing page on you know Service Provider Pro or something and just mark up the price. And your job is then to go out and find customers uh, you know, and use use that guy or whoever you find to provide the service, but you just you just take the profit from it. I would say that would be a good start. Um, I mean, we we spoke earlier about how personal brand is becoming a, a really big. It's kind of like really important. It's getting more and more important. I think if someone started today, like a great business would be personal brand as a service. So mm. you you can target CEOs or you can target founders. But you could do a podcast like this. You could do a one-hour podcast. You could ask them a series of, you know, 50 questions, 100 questions. You could make it a three-hour podcast. And then your job would be to cut that that interview up then into shorts. And then you've got you give them a bank of three months of content there. Yeah. And yeah. you could even, from those shorts, you create tweets, LinkedIn carousels, images, give all, giving them that as a, as a deliverable. I think that's a great you know, a thousand dollar service maybe or two thousand dollar service. Absolutely. And I suppose then it's something that, you know, that productized offer, something that once you've got the systems and processes in place and you've got a steady flow of customers, it's just something that you can kind of scale up. Exactly. Yeah. Point. Yeah. There could be retainers on the back end then. You, you could sell something as a one off, but then on the back end you can say, Well, I'll promote these shorts for you. I'll maintain your personal profiles for X amount a month. But that but yeah, I'll be I'll be doing something like that. Just picking book, picking one service and productizing it, and then promoting it. Love it, great. So, just going back to Fat Joe and your your ventures, then let's talk about Fat Joe. Actually, is is there an end game in sight for that? Do you think? I mean, you you've, you mentioned a little bit earlier about the this idea of turning it into a, a huge marketplace like Fiverr, yeah. for example. Is that the end game, or let's say you achieve that? Is there then yeah. going to be another target beyond that? Yeah, I think I think that's the end game. I think getting to that point would be, I think, would be a real big mission. I think we're going to need a lot of maybe maybe investment to to get there um, because you know the SEO is quite small when you look at the grand scheme of marketing and B two B. Fiverr is a you know a huge marketplace. They've they've had huge investment. They've got a lot of a lot of years ahead of us. So. Um, I think that would be the end game for me. Um, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to like sell or exit or anything like that. The way the way I see it is, I really enjoy doing this. Um, any exit wouldn't really change my life, mm-hmm. um, and then and really it would just take away something that, that I enjoy doing. So yeah. to me, it's just become more like um, a game. Let's see how far we I can take this. Let's see if we can become as big as five or if we, if we can become even half as big, you know, just a B2B marketplace outside of SEO. So, yeah, so I think that's kind of the end game that I can see. Maybe when we do get there, things will change and we'll say, okay, we want to be this now. But all I know is, you know, the Fat Joe brand is is something that's ambiguous. It can can mm-hmm. become anything. And, yeah, so I'm, I'm just really just taking it one step at a time. With, with your kind of personal ventures then is is there a, a goal in mind there so is is it a financial thing is it just the the, the reward and, and what is it that motivates you to, to want to continue this do, do you, in your head do you see this whole thing as like a game is it is it is it just something that you know you, you you just love doing what what is it that kind of motivates you to keep pushing because you've just said you you enjoy what you do yeah what, what why why bother going to that next step yeah, I enjoy what I do, and I think within the realm of of marketing as a whole, I think we're just in a really interesting industry where, you know, there's new tech emerging all the time. There's new ways to make money. I love everything from the the real low end people who can make a niche website and take you in their bedroom and go from zero to one in, you know, in a few weeks, 
right up to the enterprise level of right here's a massive agency who, who've you know increased their margins by 40 percent by outsourcing to fat joe or, you know so mm. I'm, I'm seeing both both ends of the spectrum and I, and I just i suppose it comes back to that sort of engineering mindset of whether it's seo or marketing as a whole i just think i find it really really interesting um what motivates me i suppose is is yeah i think you you hit the nail on the head that it, it is a bit like a game it is a bit like okay let's see what we can do next right we've done that let's see what we can do next i think after you hit a certain level of income you kind of you know unless you're buying yachts every day or supercars every day you, it, it doesn't really make that much difference adding zeros on the end so it has to be about something else it has to be about what what can you achieve and and also like you know seeing the team grow seeing the team you know uh, team members go from they come in as a support member they might they might get promoted to outreach specialist or they might have an interest in seo so then become an seo um you know it it's things like that that motivate me as well fantastic so you talked there about technology a little bit how much do you see the online space changing because obviously at the moment the space is changing massively rapidly mm. with, with ai in particular at the moment do you see that as an exciting change or do you see it as a little bit of a threat and how do you see yeah. the space changing over the next five years because i imagine for you guys let's just say content creation for example we're talking about written content yeah obviously ai has changed that game big time oh, oh, just over the last 12 months so yeah is that an exciting change for you threat how, how do you view it i think it's ex exciting i think it's no doubt really exciting the the new tools are at, at our disposal um is just amazing the things we can do it just means we can do things at bigger scale faster um it, you know there are some downsides it changes the way we have to offer things and in terms of content companies, we, we saw a few content companies this yeah. year go under because of because of what happened with AI. Um, we we've got a content service and that dropped around fifty percent in the height of AI. You know, and it, it's not nice to see those kind of things. But I think it, it doesn't matter what the technology is. There'll always be people who need who need help with. They don't want to figure the technology out. You know, so um, take uh, agencies for example they're not just going to stop using their their clients are not are not going to just stop using the agency just because ai has come out they need mm. the agency still they probably need the agency even more because they they've got no clue what ai is or how to use chat gpt or how to use any of the ai tools so i think it as technology moves on and advances i think it just opens up more opportunities for more service types or for more offerings um and and for niche website builders and and people who are doing things for themselves they've just got better ways to do things easier ways to scale it just levels the playing field and i think there is a threat in terms of google you know sort of not needing content anymore not needing content websites anymore it's just going to show the answer um you know and become an answer engine in a, in, a, in a way um i honestly don't think that's going to be a huge deal i think obviously for some informational terms but for the most part, you know, if someone's searching for is is Mykonos a great place to take kids on holiday, you don't want a robot to tell you that. No. You, you're going to want to see four, five, six different results. You might want to see a forum in there as well, as we see nowadays. We, we've yeah. read it in every search result. But I think Google can't just give, give one result. They've got to give this, you know, um, unbiased, here's a selection of results. You choose which one. So... Yeah, I think the, the threats are the threats are there, but I don't. I, I think the the excitement of the new technology outweighs it. Far outweighs it. Yeah, I agree with you, and I think you're right. I think people do want to connect with people on whatever yeah. level, where, even if that's written content, whether it's video content, social media, and ultimately, I think people will go where 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 they'll go to where they feel they're getting that. So it yeah. might be that Google, if Google does push that too much, they could lose market share and they could lose attention. And for us, I guess the the, the thing is to pivot and to adapt yeah. and to go where the attention is. Uh, and like you, you just mentioned forums there, like there's a, there's a big opportunity with forums right now. So yeah, I, I think, I think it's, it is anything new is always going to be a little bit scary, but I think though, like you said, those that can embrace it, 
I think they're going to do pretty well out of it. Um, but I think I think it's exciting. I think yeah. just the last twelve months, how much things have progressed. When you talk about five years, it could be insane. The progress over the next yeah. five years. So, yeah, I, I, I think I think quite often people are quite happy to make an excuse as to why not to get into something. So if, again, if there, there are people listening to this that are kind of sitting on the fence over whether to start something, there's always an excuse. And yeah, there's always. Yeah. And AI is just just another one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so okay. So in terms of that, then, do you think this kind of online pathway, working online or making money online, however you want to term it, do you think that's suitable for everyone? Do you think there are certain people that probably should stay away from that, or do you think it's something that anyone could do? I I don't think it's for everyone. No, uh, I think it's. I think you've got to have a certain mindset and a certain skill set. Um, you've got to be ready to embrace the change, like these shifting sands, of, especially in marketing, especially in SEO. But in any industry, really, it's going to come with with its own set of challenges, regulations popping up here and there, and uh, new competitors and new technologies. So I think you've got to be ready to adapt and ready to change all the time. Um, some people might be better suited to, to just getting a job or, and getting a – getting on the ladder of a career and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's, that's good and commendable and you need, you need that. Um, and it takes a certain kind of person to, to do that and be good at that as well. You know, entrepreneurs make very bad employees and, and maybe vice versa as well. Um, but I think, you know, there's certainly opportunity for everyone to, to make some money online. Um, the distribution of, because of technology, the distribution is is decentralised. So, you know, before you just had like the high street, or you just had the newspapers, or you just had the television, but now you've got, you know, social social networks making it so easy just to get your message out there to your audience. And if you can get five hundred people, a thousand people that like your little weird thing that you like, yeah. you can start building a newsletter or sharing information and making a bit of money. Even if it's not a business, it could just be some pocket money. You know. For example, YouTube is a great one. You can start a channel on YouTube about something so specific and niche and you wouldn't have thought anyone would would it would ever have heard of it, but you can find some right weird channels, you know. Yeah, ready. you can, can't you? And like you say, yeah. it doesn't need to be a huge audience no. to be able to monetize it. And it doesn't always have to be about monetizing it, does it? But no. yeah, it doesn't need to be a huge audience. I think quite often people see it and they look at like the Mr. Beasts of the world yeah. and they think, I, I need an audience like that. And actually it, it couldn't be further from the truth you know exactly you see you see uh very you know people that are making handsome amounts online particularly through youtube with an audience of a thousand or two two three thousand yeah, so yeah. yeah i think you're absolutely right there i think that's i think and i think that is a, a common misconception that people have that you know they do need yeah huge huge, huge audiences okay so uh let's i, I just want to delve back into your past a little bit okay. so prior to and just a bit, maybe education. Like, uh, do you do, do you think that education and the experiences that you had before you started Fat Joe and and even before you started the apprenticeship, I suppose, do you think those experiences and the education was important? So, if you know, again, if there are people listening to this, maybe age 16, 17, mm. 18, not sure what to do, not sure, maybe be you know, we see influencers online saying that degrees are pointless and that sort of thing. Do you think that is important to an extent or, or, or not really? And what was the case for you? Yeah. Um, I'm not really a fan of, of degrees and things like that. And th unless you, unless you want to be a, a doctor or you, you know, your career path really solidly and you, you need a degree to get to that where you want to be. Um, in terms of like education, I think obviously having a basic education in school is great. You know, try, try your best at all your GCSEs and that kind of thing. But then when it comes to, leaving school and deciding if you're going to do the, you know, the sixth form college route, university, I think that's something you you should have a think about because getting it, getting an apprenticeship or getting into a job really quick, I think is a, just the best way to learn. I mean, I'll learn most of the stuff that I know today just from being on the job, from being in, in a workplace environment and having real things happen to me, you know, and having to solve problems. Um, I learned, I went to, college for two years and did a few different courses and I didn't really it was a waste of time for me just because 
maybe maybe it's just because I didn't know what I wanted to do, you know, and I'm sitting there doing psychology and, and I'm not really sure why or how I'm going to use it. So it's, unless I want to be a psychologist, it just wouldn't, it's not suiting my path. So I think getting into a some kind of job, even if it's close to what you want to do, um, I think I think helps. Yeah, I think there's so much to be said. I mean, obviously, the, there are different pathways that people can take, but when it comes down to it, it's what you it's what you learn in the real world, isn't it? And, and particularly right now, like we've just said, the, the world is moving so fast technologically that you could go and learn it, but by the time you finish the, the course, it's going to have completely changed. Probably will have changed by the, the, the end of that term. So, yeah, definitely. you know, yeah, for sure. So, um Okay, so we're coming towards the end. In a minute, we're going to share your socials and that sort of thing, give okay. people an idea where to find more about you and, and the services that you guys offer. Uh, but if you had to give, try and wrap up all your experience into one tip that you could give someone to be successful online, kind of putting you on the spot a little bit, what would that be? So one tip for, for someone listening to be successful online. I would say... In, in this day and age, I think whatever you do, whatever business you start, or if you're doing a service, or even if you're starting a career in a in a job, I think this building public movement is really good. Um, I think sharing what you're doing and sharing what you're learning, um, even if you're just a beginner, I think it, it's so admirable to to start sharing it. And you don't have to be explicit; you don't have to be showing off with numbers or anything like that. But I think sharing what you've learned along the way is such a great way to it almost distills what you're learning as well because then you're you're putting it out there into the world and you're kind of like solidifying what you've learned solidifying your experiences it also acts as a bit of a diary look where i've come from even if it's like a youtube channel you know you're talking about what you learn and what you've done niche website you've built or new job in seo you started um i think it it's really good and what it does as well it builds you this secondary kind of audience so besides from this thing you're building you've got this other new little business that's brewing which is your personal brand which which means in the future you've got this insurance policy where if this thing fails you can go from zero to one very quickly because everyone knows and trusts you you're the guy who's been telling the story of your journey from day one and i think that's just a great way of doing it i see more and more people doing it now on twitter and i always give them a follow always give them a like because i think that's a great way to do it and i think i trust them more because they're just telling me that all their failures, all their success stories. I was like, wow, I trust this guy. If he builds a product in the future and I'm in the market for it, I'm going to buy it off him. So I think that's that's one tip I'd say. It, whatever you're doing, just do it, do it in public or try to. Yeah, I think the self-reflection side of it is so important. Uh, yeah. and that's, the one, that's the one thing. When I started the Affiliate School YouTube channel, I think that I put a lot of the success that I had after that with my own portfolio of sites down yeah. to fact that I started the channel because yeah. I was suddenly reflecting a lot more on what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And exactly. I, I, yeah, yeah. I think that is purely down to that fact. So that's a great tip. Love it. Not had that one yet. Brilliant. Where can people find you, Joe? I've got a nice little ticker. I did put it on earlier. We'll pop it, pop it up again. So that's your Twitter. Is that, that is right, isn't it? At Fat that's Joe the one, Davis. yeah. Fat Joe Davis. Yeah. So you can find me on, on Twitter or X on, on Fat Joe Davis and on LinkedIn. If you just search Joe Davis, and obviously fatjoe.com if you're an agency and you want link building and content you can speak to us there and i do have a newsletter at joedavis.com uh, that goes out every wednesday um that's all about agency tips and scaling your agency fantastic so yeah make sure you do go and give joe a follow he does share so much value and a lot of just his day-to-day -day things that he's getting on with uh and it's all relevant to digital marketing and and making money online. So make sure you do go and follow Joe over there and check out fatjoe.com for all the services and fantastic services that they offer. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a really, really great podcast today. Uh, and I think you've shared some really good insights that, that have not cropped up in any of the other episodes as well. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Pleasure.